We've now derived a couple important equations. The first important equation that we derived is one that states that the rate of motion of mobile material on a hill slope per unit width of that hill slope is equal to minus k sub m, this material or mobile regolith or however you'd like to call it, motion constant times the gradient, up. Oh, I'm going to draw normal derivative, an ordinary derivative, times the gradient in that slope. And we, the reason we have this minus here is to make sure that things go downhill instead of uphill. So that's our first equation. We have another equation as well. And that equation is the one that we just derived above. And what that says, as we can see right up here, this is that equation, is that the changes in the thickness of mobile material, so the h sub m over dt over time, so the rate of change of thickness of mobile material is equal to minus d q sub m over dx. And so that what that means is just like what we were talking about before. If there's more material that goes into a parcel of hill slope than leaves, then that parcel of mobile material on the hill slope ends up getting thicker. So, and that's where we get down to this equation eight right here, where we have dhm over dt is equal to, hmm, all of those terms. So let's just see how we get there. And it's gonna be a pretty simple plug and chug where we just say, all right, we've got an equation for q sub m. Let's throw it in there and let's see what we get. So dh sub m over dt is equal to d over dx. And we're gonna change these to partial derivatives because now we're dealing with derivatives in time and in space. d over dx of k sub m dz over dx. And I didn't write in the negative signs because we have a negative sign here and a negative sign there. And so both of them, in fact, cancel out to become positives. And so that's how we get to this equation that's right down here. And this equation is, in fact, known as the diffusion equation, but it's in a slightly more complicated form, a slightly less unpacked form than it, it, than it would be um, traditionally written. And the reason for that is because we're also considering the gradients in this k sub m term, this hill slope diffusivity term. And so, as you know, this above equation is written with k sub m inside one of these spatial derivatives. And what that means is that the hill slope diff diffusivity may change over the course of the hillside. That could occur because of something like lithology. So uh, we've talked about large blocky carbonate rock units like a dolostone or a limestone that can be more difficult to erode than a shale. Um, and likewise, there can be differences in vegetation um, where, for example, we have this example of a hillside up in and a hillside showing um, that, you know, this way, so this is in Idaho. This is going to the should be going to the south, I believe. So typically what we see here then is that this would be to the south towards the equator. And then the trees would be on the side facing the north, in this case, the pole. And that's because these uh, there's too much um, evaporation for trees to be able to live on one side of the hill slope. And so they end up dominating one, one half of the landscape, and then there are a bunch of grasses and a more rocky landscape on the other side. And so there can be differences in vegetation that also lead to differences in hill slope diffusivity by changing the land cover. Um, animal communities could also alter hill slope diffusivity. So if, um, and by the way, I'm just gonna draw in here, let drier, wetter. Uh, there's no way you're going to be able to read that. I can't even read that, and I'm writing it. Wetter. Hoved animals can cause significant soil creep, and um, as, as can tilling, etc. We've talked about a bunch of these processes. So, on a single hill, 
and especially one that has uniform land cover and lithology, it's also possible to have a single value for hill subdiffusivity, k sub m. And if we remember, if we have, I'm just going to rewrite this equation because I think it's important, so dh sub m over dt, if this is equal to d over dx, k sub m, d, oh, d, z over dx. Well, we already were able to get rid of the minus sign because minus 1 is just a constant. And if this also becomes a constant, then we can pull that out of the equation there, which then leads us to this equation here, where we just have d over dx of dz dx, which gives us d squared z over dx squared. And what the, this, this tells us now is that the rate of change in mobile material thickness through time is proportional to hill slope curvature. So the second derivative and so that, and that is meaning that then this curvature is going to determine whether material is going to necessarily re be removed either from a convex area or it will gather in a concave area. And that will de determine how this material thickness erodes through time, or erodes through time, gradually evolves through time. And if I make one more simplifying assumption, and I'm just going to sketch this in at the bottom, is if whole hill is mobile material, then we can just say that h sub m is equal by definition to z. And we can write then what is our final, um, very simplified, but pretty much canonical diffusion equation, which I just write dz, which is elevation over dt, is equal to k sub m d squared z over dx squared. And this is the simplest form for Hell slope diffusion.